Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sabans. We want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them. And today we got a hell of a show for you guys. Before we get into it, uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you're not subscribed, if also if you don't have on all the notifications, make sure you hit turn on all the notifications to be notified the moment we drop our content. Anyway, let me get into this uh, topic here. It seems like I've been causing a lot of problems. Uh, for some of these LeBron fans, they've been very, very upset with me over the last three days. A lot of them, I think, have their calculators out now asking, hey, how many LeBron James videos? Three days in a row, four days in a row, five days in a row. Keep counting. We're going to keep making these LeBron James videos. We're going to keep getting these views and pissing you guys off in the process. That's because that's just, just how it's going to work. The issue these guys have is not that we're making LeBron videos. They're they don't like the fact that we're making vid videos that doesn't go along with what Nick Wright has to say, what Shannon Sharp has to say, what e everybody at ESPN has to say, what all of these guys sitting over there twerking it up all over the place, slapping each other with honey all, all up and down the hallway. If it's not that, then you can't talk about LeBron. If you're not saying anything positive, then don't talk about him. And if you aren't going to say anything positive, I'm going to sit up there and be tracking your channel down, hunting you all over the Internet, counting how many videos you can. Y'all keep counting. We're going to do as many as we like. That's just going to be the truth about it. And I'm not going to stop because I still uh, got a lot to say. And then when you give it to them, they start hollering and screaming like they victims. And oh, my God, how could you say something like this? You know, I'm out here being stalked, man, by this, by Hermit the Frog out here. It's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know. What to, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get. I don't know. I don't know what to do. This ugly ass frog keep running around like. Son, don't ever do a don't do a close up of your face talking about I look good. Cut it, yo. Nobody thinks you look good, bro. Call, ask your girl. Be like, yo, see me, me and Dreamers Pro. We'll look better. See what she say. You gonna go on a rant that day when you ask her that. But anyway, let let me get into this uh, topic here. Speaking of turning themselves into victims, you know LeBron is one of the best at doing that. LeBron will act like as if he's being attacked when nobody's attacking him. When they were like, oh, all the scrutiny that he's received. Who, who's been scrutinizing LeBron throughout his career? We got, we got, uh, we got um, Skip Bayless. We've had Stephen A. Smith at the beginning, but that's when he didn't win championships. Who are these people that have been scrutinizing LeBron James? As a matter of fact, all you have is people on TV praising him all day long. So what happened? He scores his 40,000 uh, point, and they ask him, what would you say to your younger self? And he goes, you know, uh, you know, um, if I say to my younger self, when everybody doubted me and all of this, I'm sitting up here like, yo, what are you, what are you talking about? Everybody doubted you. Well, apparently, Chris Broussard and Rob Parker from the Odd Couple, uh, they heard what LeBron had to say, and they were 100% not feeling what what he had to say. So what we want to do is want to play exactly what Rob Parker and Chris Broussard had to say about LeBron James once again trying to turn himself into a victim. Take a listen to what they had to say here. My experience, Rob. When, and I was covering the league when LeBron came out. I was in Cleveland a lot um, early in his career. I got to be honest. I didn't see. I I don't agree with the notion that everybody wanted LeBron to fail. I felt like people were excited about this great prodigy coming out of high school and that they wanted to see, can he be another Michael Jordan or can he be you know, close to Jordan or something like that. And so, Rob, remember he had commercials, the the chosen one. There was one, can I get a witness or, you know, those witness commercials. Dr. J, I think he was in a commercial with him. You had the four LeBrons, you know, in that whole thing he did early in his career. Like, I don't know, Rob. I, I didn't, I felt like people generally were pulling for LeBron or, or certainly not pulling against him. But what, what was your take? Yeah, I I just think that's LeBron doing a woe is me. Look at what I did. Nobody thought, dude. You you were the rave. Uh, you were Sports Illustrated. You were the kid, the chosen one on your back. All you know, Chris. Like this is revisionist history. When people yeah, turned I, on I, LeBron, I mean, was when he went to Miami and formed the Super Team. That was the that was when he became the evil empire, and people you know were like, oh. What is yep. this? That's when it changed. There weren't people pulling against him. When they went to the finals that year, they beat the Pistons, you know, and the Spurs. It was no, incredible. It right. was incredible. Nobody expected that. I, I I disagree with that. I don't really believe that there were people openly rooting and, and hoping that he didn't, 
You know, that was so early on. I just, I, I, I don't I, remember I, I'm that. I'm with you. Right? I don't I, remember that, Chris. I don't. I think the, the only, and, and tell me if there was someone else. From what I recall, before LeBron went to Miami, the only real loud voice that was critical of LeBron was Skip. Probably Skip so. Bayless. I don't remember, like, I mean, I would always be defending LeBron against Skip. I don't remember a many other people. There was really, not, to me, there was really nothing to be critical of. You know what I mean? I mean, he was, like you said, he was 22 in his fourth year when he beat Detroit. Right. That was a very good and we Detroit were at that team. Game. We were at finals. that game, Chris. Yeah. We scored 26 straight points or whatever it was. You remember yep. that? That was a moment in the NBA. We were there for that. I, I think you hit it on the head, Rob. It, Miami was when the tide LeBron turned. became polarized. And yep. people either loved him or they hated him. And I think had he said throughout my career or, you know, I've had, look, I've been a polarizing athlete. Some people love me. Some people hate me. Or, or even if he just was like, I've had a lot of haters, a lot of detractors, a lot of people pulling against me. I think that could have been accurate. Because at some point in his career, but to say from that day did one, happen, right? everybody day, was against I, yeah. him, I, I don't believe that. I think that's a I, way with you. of making himself to say, look what I did. See, I got nobody wanted me to be here. Nobody thought I could play. I mean, or nobody thought I, you know, would accomplish anything. Right. I just think that that's not true. So you heard uh, what they had to say. I don't know why LeBron has this fetish for doing this to, to himself and making it seem. Who doubted LeBron? Who? Who doubted him? To their point, and I remember it, LeBron only became the victim when, or not the victim, he people started to dislike him after he decided to go join the Miami Heat. And not only because he decided to go join the Miami Heat, but how he did it. Let me jog the memory of some of the people that may not know what actually went on. LeBron was in Cleveland. They lose that series to the Celtics. The owner was already feeling a type of way about LeBron. He leaves the Cleveland Cavaliers after he just stopped playing. He quit in that series. He leaves them. He then goes to Miami to go join the league MVP at the time. Uh, not screaming, not the league MVP. The scoring champion at the time because Dwayne Wade led the league in scoring the year before and a, and, a, and, a, and a finals MVP and Dwayne Wade. Then on top of that, he brings Chris Bosh, who's like a 20 and 10 guy from the Toronto Raptors. They get to Miami. In, in the process of doing all of that, he go holds a press conference on television, an hour-long special called The Decision. During the press conference, he talks about, he, of course, copies off of Kobe. He goes, oh, I'm taking my talents to South Beach. Nobody in the arena che uh, 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 um, cheered for him. They were like, what? He decides to do that. Everybody was like, bro, what are you doing? This is so distasteful. It doesn't stop there. He gets to Miami. What does he do when he gets to Miami? All three of these dudes hold a parade. I've never seen that before. They actually hold a parade. And during the parade, they're up here celebrating like they won the championship. And at that time, a lot of NBA fans were aggravated with the what, what LeBron and these guys were doing because they took three all-star players in the heart of their primes and they formed a super team. To add insult to injury, he then gets on the stage and says what? Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. The reason people were aggravated, apart from the fact that he was saying that it was cringy, is because they knew that you just formed a super team and you couldn't figure out a way to win. So you had to go form a super team. Instead of doing it quietly, you then get up there and start bragging about the fact that not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. So that season, the entire NBA fan base was rooting against LeBron. Why? Because of his ridiculous antics. Nobody forced him to do that. He did it all on his own. It was him and his team. No one forced him. Nobody made him. He decided on his own volition that this is what we're going to do. He goes up there. The entire season, everybody is rooting against the Miami Heat. They get to the NBA Finals. Dirk Nowitzki, I think at one point had like a cold or something like that. There was a game where you heard D-Wade and LeBron walking through the hallway, making fun of Dirk, doing coughing sound, uh, uh, making fun of the fact that Dirk was sick. 
They get to the finals. LeBron James totally wets the bed. In some games, I think he only scored six points. In the NBA finals, they get totally embarrassed. And LeBron cost Dwayne Wade a championship. Let me repeat it once more. LeBron cost Dwayne Wade a championship. And Dwayne Wade was the leading scorer for the Chicago uh, for the Miami Heat that playoff series. That playoff run, excuse me. They lose the championship. Then at the end of all of that, what does LeBron James do? He goes and steps to the lectern and basically tells people, all of the people that are saying this and this about me, they're going to go back to their miserable lives and I'm going to be living my fantastic life. And in the ad insult to injury, he's walking around all over the summertime with a shirt on at San Tropez at New York that says, check my stats. How the F do you do all of that and expect people to be like, I love it. I love this. This is amazing. Only twerking ass LeBron fans will see that and their titties will start tingling and be like, oh, bro, look at LeBron, man. Somebody get the honey. Somebody get the honey. This is what he did. Prior to that, everybody was hailing him, exalting him. But because of his own moves, not moves that somebody did to him, his own antics turn people off. Just like he turned more people off when he called himself the greatest player of all time after he won the champ. That one right there, right there made me the greatest player of all time. What do you think is going to happen? So all of this stuff about, oh, they turn, they, they, uh, they, uh, they were against me and all. Typical LeBron James, they're all victims. Oh, they were against me. They're coming after me. They're all coming for me. At the end, he won the championship with the Lakers. He goes up there. I want my respect. From who? Everybody's giving you your respect. They twerk it up all day on TV. So I'm glad that they pushed back. LeBron made that up. There is nobody that was the, it was after, it was over his antics throughout the course of his career. Then people started getting fed up and people are still fed up. People are still fed. I'm one of those people that I'm not a fan of LeBron's antics, man. He got way too many antics. LeBron be sitting up there, they ask him a question, you should start capping for no reason. Like, do, do you want to parade? You know, I've never been somebody that ever, like, bro, stop. Goddamn. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you on the next show. Peace.